Hi, I'm Rosalina Lynn, and I am with anointingwithoil.blogspot.com, also anointingwithoil.com. And I've had a lot of requests and people asking me about how to make the hummingbird nectar. I put that on Twitter not too long ago that I added a drop of essential oils into my nectar. And so I have a lot of people that are um, sending me messages, so I thought I would just do a video to show you exactly how I make my hummingbird nectar. Now, I, I believe that we should all be stewards of the environments around us, including um, in our home, and also uh, taking care of God's animals. So as the last in times prophet, I've been doing a lot of that, because in Revelations it says not to worry about the animals. Um, and not to touch the animals or the land. Um, and that was when one of the angels of death went over the world. So um, part, part of my job of being under God's hand is being a keeper of his animals during this time. Because as a prophet, we do things for the things to come. So I wanted to just show you what I use. I use a coffee pot with just water, and then you'll need a coffee filter, you need a hummingbird feeder, um, one of your um, favorite essential oils that I don't use anything with fennel, like peppermint or spearmint, but I do use the other ones. I don't use citronella or purification because I don't want them to leave, <laughs> I want them to come back, and those are definitely um, some of the oils that kind of, you know, uh, scare away some of the animals, and we don't want to do that. Because, you know, it's good for the bugs, bad for the birds when they can't come to your feeder. You also need two cups of sugar. So, um, and this is just a regular white refined sugar. And I um, have this filled to two cups. And this gives me an opportunity, again, to talk about some of my favorite oils. And I've talked so much about frankincense. And it's been... a one of my favorites, in the temple that Solomon had built, he they used to diffuse frankincense incense. But if you go to my blog, and you look in my archives, from either in November in my packet, that's a free download, or I believe it was in um, February or March archives, where the temple of God, that the Solomon's temple, looks exactly like the human body. So whatever they diffused right before they went into the temple to the Holy of Holies is our limbic region of the brain. And I think that is so incredible because uh, fragrance goes directly to our brain and nothing else can penetrate. In science and doctors, none of them can penetrate the limbic region of the brain, but um, the Lord has shown us that essential oils and perfumes and those kind of things can. And we can re-trigger ourselves because... Um, I'm, I'm a warrior, <laughs> conquered all of the seven curses of the generations that Jesus has predicted in Matthew, and also um, of the DNA damage that all had that had been done, and also that um, it just is really good for your lungs and your heart and, and your body, and I have. To, you know, I give this to my animals besides the hummingbirds. So it's really an awesome fragrance to you know get started. At first, you're not gonna like it because you're gonna be detoxing, but eventually you will. And I put those on my feet and on my lower back because your lower back is where your immune system and your nervous system starts, and then the back of my neck and the, uh, sometimes on my thumbs. But definitely, I, I put it over my heart. And one of the things I had shared in another video is that the early Christians used the frankincense in valor, which has a blue tansy in it, and a ling ling. And they would put over the forehead, which is like the third eye, over either the heart or their uh, lower abs, and then across the shoulders. And if you notice, it does form the cross. So, um, I believe that the early Christians used this a long time ago, and we um, completely adapted it, but then we forget to add the oils, because it's the oils that are protective as well. So, the Thieves' Blend is a Thieves' Blend from the four thieves that were caught during the time of the Black Plague. That was 
happened about 14, 13 when they were caught. They did not get sick when they robbed, uh, stole um, valuables off a dead, rotting corpse and from those who were dying. And, you know, that was a pretty big thing back then. You know, we don't know what kind of sickness it was, but it did, you know, take so many lives. So, I, um, and science today has shown that the cinnamon and the clove with the maluca, uh, the lemon and the rosemary in here kills 99.9% .9 of all the bad germs. Now, we need to have some, some germs in our bodies so it can digest, you know, the bacteria and stuff. So, but it kills the bad germs. It kills black mold. It kills MRSA. It kills bed, by, uh, bed bugs in your mattresses. So they used um, a lot of these things back then. So they didn't have vaccinations back then. They didn't need it because they knew how to use the herbs. And we lost using essential oils during the Dark Ages when um, people were called witches. <laughs> Um, and, and uh, I don't know if it was the Pope or some religious leader started putting down the use of essential oils, but it has been making a major comeback definitely over the last 20 years. So I also use a drop of balsam fir, and this is really good too. Now sometimes um, balsam fir has been called the liquid gold of the, one of the three gifts that Jesus was given. Uh, when he was born. So, um, so this is one of the Wiseman gifts, and it smells really good, and this is processed out of the uh, trees in Idaho. Then we have Abundance. Abundance has the great, um, it has the cinnamon, and um, it has the spruce and patchouli, but I thought, oh, it has a ginger. I thought it had the rose oil, but maybe not. Um, this is, uh, if you want to start getting abundance in the home, definitely use this and learn a little bit about feng shui because if you know anything about Solomon's Temple, it was based off feng shui. And feng shui is not evil, it's just how you perceive it. But, um, because Madrian, Chinese, and Hebrew are very similar in the languages. So, um, I believe that those people were the ones that were dispersed during the building of the Tower of Babel. Um, so they had a mix of the languages, but the languages were so close together that they carried on in China, and then we carried on over in um, Jerusalem, Palestine area. So abundance, if you want to start opening those kind of things, have the abundance where you want to definitely fire up, you know, in your living area where you're gonna have um, family time, and open up the abundance of love or in the wealth in your wealth home or in your um, bedroom for love and romance to your door that enters into um, your business and reputation. So this is a really good one to start using and diffusing in your home. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to put the filter into our coffee pot. And I have the water and I fill this up to 11 cups of water. So we turn that on and you just let the water run. So while this is going to start percolating, um, I make extra water because my hummingbird feeders do not last long. Within five days, I have two hummingbird feeders. They're completely empty. And that's been going on for the last two months. So I kind of got smart and started using um, extra, this is like a salsa jar, and I put my water in here and cool it down, then I put it in the refrigerator. So then it's cooled down, it's ready to work. So I'm going to put one drop of abundance and I'm going to just gently Kind of shake it up first. Um, you don't want to shake it too forcefully because I don't want the molecules in the oil to um, completely um, tear apart. I kind of want to keep them, you know, pretty strong. 
and then I just pour this into the hummingbird feeder. Now when you add the two cups of sugar, you want to make sure that the sugar is completely dissolved. And I don't add the oils until all of the water has been completely drained. Now, when I have extra, I will fill this up towards the top and then put the top on. But just for demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and put the top on. This hummingbird feeder, I think I got at Walmart. I got one on um, David Montham um, base, Air Force Base um, PX, or Base Exchange. And um, these are like 10 or $12. Um, they have the, the coverings on here for the bees so that they don't get inside and drown inside, but they can still, uh, around the edge, it must kind of drain, um, drain or something, because you will find, you know, some of the bees go around there. And I do not color my water, because, um, the red coloring of the dyes is not good for you. Oh, what, baby? Um, my dog wants to join us. <laughs> So, um, and there he is. Get off the table. You're showing everybody you have no manners. Come on. Come on, you want some? I'm going to show everybody how we use this. So, when I use the frankincense oil, get over, baby. You just, you know, put it on yourself. And then you just... And you pat them all the way down to the tail. And you rub their tummies. See, and he just relaxes right away. Um, essential oils are really good for animals. And they don't need a lot because, like I said, their, their scents are so much stronger. And he needs to cuddle with Mama. Huh, we need to cuddle, don't we? Um, they've been outside all morning chasing lizards. The fun thing about living in a desert, there is a lot of lizards. So that's basically my uh, demonstration. Um, after this is done, uh, it will usually fill up to about eight and a half cups of uh, hot water, and I'll add the sugar and dissolve that, and I will let that sit until it's cooled. I will pour them into. Um, my containers here or into my hummingbird feeders and I um, put one drop of oil when I fill my hummingbird feeders. So I make enough so that I can keep all of my hummingbird um, little birdies. I have about four different kinds to come but I don't even know what they all are because they're, they're red heads and they're green heads and they're little female. They're all brown ones of different sizes. Some of them are this size, some are this size. And so, and I'm starting to get more flowers in my garden. And they're starting to bloom, so they're starting to eat off of um, the mesquite trees are blooming, so they'll eat off of the mesquite trees and the other flowers. So thank you for watching my video, and sorry about the interruptions, but you know, if you love animals as much as I do, um, interruptions like this is not so bad. So thank you again. And come to my blog at anointedwithoil.blogspot.com, anointingwithoil.com. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at anoint.withoil at gm.com. Thank you, and have a great day.